ही ओ ओम श्री साई राम offering our collective prayers yes, at the divine lotus feet of bhagwan shri satya sai baba i welcome you all to this episode of pathway to prashanti pathway to prashanti as you all know was launched last week on the auspicious occasion of ganesh chaturthi pathway to prashanti is a weekly satsang that was launched by the Sri Sakti Sai Overseas Organization of New Zealand. In this satsang, we will have alumni and devotees from Prashanti Nilayam and across the globe sharing their journey, their experiences with Bhagwan Sri Sakti Sai Baba. Tonight, we are very fortunate to have amongst us brother shri das subramanian from australia he will be sharing his journey his experiences on the theme baba the eternal companion brother shri das subramanian did his mba at bhagwan's university from 1996 to 1998 He has been an active member of the organization since 2010. Brother Shreya Subramanian was a former devotional coordinator for Australia, a former SSC coordinator for Bahrain, and a SSC teacher. He is a Vedam teacher for adults and children in Australia. He works as head of technology. a travel management company in sydney australia in this satsang tonight we will have brother sharing for about 40 minutes followed by question and answers you can type in your question and answers in the qa section and brother will be answering them after his sharing let us all now sit back relax and enjoy this divine journey with brother shri das subramanian over to you brother saira om shri saira offering my most humble pranams at bhagwan's lotus feet i just want to start with a story that bhagwan related um in a discourse in 1997 and uh, the story goes that uh, vishnu lord vishnu and narada were having a conversation <clears throat> and uh, in this conversation vishnu asks narada which of the five elements is the greatest you know the five uh, elements uh, starting with earth water uh, fire space uh, and wind and narada immediately said it has to be the earth because earth is supposed to have all the qualities which the previous other elements didn't have and uh, vishnu said are you sure it's it's earth and the narada said yes it is earth in my view which is the best of uh, and the most powerful of all the elements but uh, then lord vishnu said uh, earth is not really it's just one fourth of the of the earth right the the actual land is just one fourth but water is almost three fourth of the earth so how can you say you know the earth is better than water so narada said yes bhagwan you are right i think water is it's it's even more powerful it's the best of the elements then uh, vishnu said if that is the case agastya the rishi agastya the sage agastya he actually drank the entire oceans there's a story that comes in the puranas that he actually drank all the oceans of earth so uh, vishnu asks narada if agastya has drunk the entire water the three fourth of what you see on earth has been drunk by him is he not the greatest 
So Narada said, yes, yes, yes. Actually, Agastya is even greater than uh, uh, water. But then uh, Vishnu says, if that is the case, Agastya is actually a very tiny star that you see in the sky. So isn't the sky greater than uh, Sage Agastya? So uh, Narada says, yes, that is, that is true a lot. The sky is even better, is more powerful than Agastya himself. But then uh, Vishnu says, if that is the case, in the Vaman avatar of Lord Vishnu, of his own avatar, I actually covered the entire sky with one foot of one with one feet. I, you know, I just uh, one of uh, I covered the entire sky. So isn't isn't the Lord the greatest of the Lord of of everything? So Narada says, yes, so Lord, that is the case. You are uh, the best of the Lord. You are the most powerful. And then Lord Vishnu says, but I reside in the heart of my devotee. So isn't the devotee more powerful than the Lord? And Narada says, yes, O Lord, the devotee is more powerful than anything else. So I, Swami, who is the silent witness in each one of our heart, and I, I pray to the Bhagwan resident in each of your heart, today who's listening to this, this talk. And this talk actually reflects on this point of Bhagwan being a silent but an eternal companion in our lives. So uh, I just, I want to share this, this, uh, it's, it's uh, all of us know about this truth, but I just want to bring this with my own personal experiences with Bhagwan. And uh, I, I think that will, will also resonate in a way with all your uh, personal experiences as, as well. We all know that Bhagwan is the silent witness. We have heard this in, in, in so many discourses of Bhagwan himself, and also in so many satsangs that we have been part of, and in so many discourses that we have read or heard. And also in all the talks, I'm sure you have heard that we keep saying that Swami is a silent witness uh, of every act that we perform uh, that we also know that he is, he is aware of our thoughts, he is aware of our action. Uh, everything that we do, he, is, he, is, he knows that. Uh, I, I want to start with this experience. We all know this, this is, this is true. Bhagwan is a silent witness. Bhagwan knows our thoughts. Bhagwan knows all our actions. And uh, uh, I, I was working in the university on a project for the university. Uh, it, this was in the year 19... Uh, 98. I was working from 1997 on this. Uh, uh, we were preparing a software for the university with a couple of my friends, and it would happen that uh, after the college finishes, I would we would I would head back to the uh, institute where I would be doing the programming, and I will miss out on uh, all the activities of the uh, insightful and thought. So normally I would miss the initial darshan of Bhagwan. I would probably miss the initial bhajans as well. I would probably come towards the last two or three bhajans just before the arti. I will go back to the uh, uh, to, to, to the uh, cycle and hall, and I will sit and listen to the last two bhajans, and I will go. It so happened that on that day, it was after the sports day, and I heard that Bhagwan had given some Padra Namaskar to a few people. So as soon as I came back from the institute, I was sitting uh, right at the, uh, you know, back, uh, you know, where the two big gates are. And from there, you could see the bhajan hall. You could see Swami seated on the on the throne there. But I had, a, you know, the, my, the boy next to me said, Bhagavan had given some Padra Namaskar to a few people. And uh, I was sitting there uh, and I was thinking, oh, Bhagavan, I was doing your work. I have been doing your work. And uh, uh, and you, you didn't give me Padra Namaskar. Just a thought in my mind that, you know, Bhagavan hasn't given me the Padra Namaskar. Bhagavan is sitting there. It was, I think, the second last bhajan. I think I, I normally I knew that around the time where the second last bhajan will go on. And immediately after that, there would be Aarti. When this thought came in my mind and I was looking at Bhagavan and uh, slowly I saw Bhagavan get up from the chair and then he got uh, down and he walked right to the gate. Very slowly, he went past me. Uh, and saw, you know, some devotees who were standing near the gate. 
Tommy saw them. He again came back and he stood right in front of me. And he didn't, uh, he was just standing in front of me. He didn't say anything to me. He was just looking at the boys. I, I you know, uh, got some courage and I looked at, bhajans are going on. And I said, I looked at Bhagwan. I said, Bhagwan, can I take Pad Namaskar? And Swami said, he pointed at his feet. He said, yes, take it. I, you know, took Pad Namaskar of Bhagwan. And then Bhagwan then went back and sat on the chair. After that, there was, Aarti was given. The, I'm sure each one of us have some experience of this nature where we have a prayer in our heart and Bhagwan will respond to that prayer. How does Bhagwan respond to this prayer unless and until he is very close? See, in this case, Bhagwan is sitting uh, right at uh, maybe a, 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 about 50 meters away from where I was sitting. A thought has passed and he, he has heard that thought and then he has responded to that, that prayer. Bhagwan knows every, every uh, thought in your, in your mind. He, he hears everything. He watches everything. He notices everything. And that is uh, uh, something that is, it keeps getting revealed through these various experiences. But one thing you should remember, he's not just someone who listens to you because he's a resident of your heart. He's a resident in everyone's heart. So that is the important point we should know that when I pray, he knows what's happening in your, in your mind, in your, in your head, in your action, in your interactions with people around you, you know, the way you speak to your colleagues, the way you speak to your spouse, the way you speak to your children, uh, the way you think about your manager, everything that happens that goes past your, your brain is, is being witnessed by the Lord. Everything that you do with your hand is witnessed by the Lord. Everywhere you go, he witnesses. Everything that you see, he witnesses. Everything that you hear, he notices. But the point here is that he also notices, he also hears, he also sees everything in everyone else's, uh, from as a resident of everyone else's heart as well. I had this uh, experience, uh, a very interesting experience, uh, uh, in 1990s, this, this was in the year 1996, sorry, 1997 again. And, uh, this experience was, uh, uh, I have a sofa. I mean, right from the time I, um, went to Parthi, I have never given a single letter to Bhagwan. And the reason is again, for the same reason, uh, that, you know, Lord, you are a resident of my heart. You know everything that goes on in my heart. You know every thought, every want, every desire. You know. So why should I give a letter to you? Uh, and I always used to wonder why people are, you know, troubling Bhagwan by giving these letters to him. He has to carry all these heavy letters in his hands and he has to go. And I, I had this thought and I have never given a letter to him. So it's never happened uh, in my two years of my studies there. But it so happened a relative of mine. He had uh, come to uh, Parthi because his uh, his uh, son had a, a hole in the heart. So it was a heart problem. So he had got his uh, child to the super specialty hospital. And the doctors there said that the child is uh, probably all right for another couple of more years before any surgery is performed. And they said not to worry. And But as a father, obviously, he would, he would be worried. Uh, and... You know, my mother had told him that, uh, you know, Sridhar is there in the institute. Maybe you can give him. Uh, and he wanted to give a letter to Bhagwan praying for his grace. So my mom had informed him that he could come and give a letter to me. And uh, so he he sought me out uh, after bhajans. And he said, uh, Sridhar, he said, this is the situation. My child went to the super specialty hospital. Uh, and the doctors have advised a few more years uh, of wait before a surgery is performed, but I am a bit concerned. So here is a letter that I want you to give Bhagwan. So as a student, you have, he, he tried actually, he was as, uh, as a, a devotee, he was sitting behind uh, and hoping that Bhagwan would come past him and he could give a letter. It happened, he was there for a couple of days, but uh, Bhagwan didn't uh, you know, go to the place that he was sitting. And then he didn't get that opportunity and he had to go back to his hometown. Uh, so he sought me out and gave me the letter. But you know, my views, as I mentioned before, was not to give any letter. So he gave, took that letter. I put it in a book that I was carrying that day. This was 
uh, in the if if i remember it was on june july 2000 uh, 1997 so remember that june july 1997 is when this uh, this incident occurred and uh, i went back to the hostel and uh, soon forgot about it forgot about this letter forgot about, forgot about this relative of mine forgot about this child's heart problem it was not my concern and uh, then that happened uh, months passed and uh, the next year it was 1998 and uh, uh, i was sitting it, it, the month was march it was my birthday and uh, during birthdays you have this opportunity to go right in the inner portico uh, with you know some uh, what you call the uh, consecrated rice when bhagwan would bless you and uh, you know it's an op and you can take father namaskar of bhagwan you have this opportunity so I was uh, one of those students, a few students who went on that day, sat in the inner port portico. Bhagwan uh, came after the darshan. He went into the interview room. And when that happens, you know, you're all seated, uh, waiting for Bhagwan to come up out after the interview. And then Bhagwan would, would bless the, the children. So Bhagwan came that day out of the interview room. Uh, and then he was talking to some. Uh, first, he, he actually blessed us. He blessed all the children. I took Padana Namaskar and all of that. Then he was uh, talking to some senior devotees sitting next to me. And then he pointed at me and uh, he, he said, uh, he, he wasn't even seeing me. He was just talking to someone, but his hands were right next to my face. And uh, he, was, he was doing this. And I didn't know what Bhagwan wanted. Then he looked at me and said, Ibu, in, in Telugu, he said, give me. Uh, I had no idea what Bhagwan wanted from me. Uh, I was completely confused and I had, you know, my heart was beating really fast. Uh, I didn't know what Bhagwan, uh, you know, wanted, you know, at that time, your, your brain goes on an overdrive. And I was a bit worried. And by that time, the second time Bhagwan said, give me, at this time, all the people around me are looking at me. I said, you know, Bhagwan is asking this guy to give something and, you know, why, why is he not responding? But I had no idea what Bhagwan wanted from me. Then Bhagwan looked at me and said, there is a letter in that book give me that letter. So I opened that book and then I saw this letter. Even then, because this was almost eight, nine months uh, since that my relative had given me this letter, I did not even realize this letter was that guy's letter because I was, my, I was in a complete state of shock. Uh, so I, was, I immediately took that letter and gave it to Bhagwan. And people around me must have thought that here is, uh, you know, he must have written a letter for Bhagwan. And Bhagwan reminded him to give the letter. So that's what people would think, right? And I gave the letter and I sat down completely, you know, uh, shocked for a few seconds because I've never given any letter. I thought it was my letter. I thought maybe I, I wrote this letter sometime and I forgot about it. That is how I was thinking. And then a few minutes later, it dawned on me that this is the letter that was given to me almost eight, nine months back by that relative. And I never... Uh, gave this letter to Bhagwan. It was eight, nine months later that Bhagwan uh, took this, this letter from me. But then wasn't the prayer of that devotee uh, fulfilled? It must have been fulfilled at the, the moment that the prayer was written. The prayer, you know, you write the prayer on a piece of paper and then you offer it to the Lord. He has heard your, because the action is then instantaneously hears you. But that was more a lesson to, for me that Bhagwan, he is a resident in everyone's heart, not just our heart. It's not that what I think is right, what I think I want is not what Bhagwan listens. He listens to everyone's prayer and he works through you as an instrument. So when you get an opportunity to do something, you have to see this as an opportunity given by Bhagwan. You are merely an instrument uh, uh, for Bhagwan listening to someone else's prayer. How does Bhagwan act in the world? He acts through us as an instrument. And we have a choice whether we want to be efficient instruments or not. But the fact is that he is a resident in each one's heart. We think that, you know, our dear friends are, are, are uh, you know, close, you know, people that we, we had childhood from, right from our childhood, we have people that they have come with us, our student friends who have been students. We think they are our real true friends. But Bhagwan has said, no, they are not our true friends. Our, our families uh, are not our true friends. Uh, Bhagwan again, has given so much of description. If you read Satya Sai Speaks, 
you will know Bhagwan constantly reminds us. You think your your best friend in your uh, uh, in your, from your school will stand by you. He may or may not, but he is not the true friend. It may not be your uh, uh, your relatives. They are all like Bhagwan calls them passing clouds. But there is one person who is constantly with you right from the time you are born to the time you you this, you leave this world. And that is the Lord himself. He is your true friend and he comes with you at every stage, listening to you, acting through you. So uh, you, you, may, you may ask this question, but why does he not always respond? I, I have so many times I've called out to him, but he doesn't seem to be responding to all my prayers. Some prayers, yes, he does, uh, but not to all prayers. I remember when I, we were uh, migrating to Australia, we were sitting in the in our in our center uh, after bhajans, and we would tell Bhagwan, Bhagwan, you know, if you think that this is the right decision for us, let a flower drop from that particular photo of yours. So you know, you would keep flowers on the pictures, like the one that you see behind me. There will be a picture, and you know, I would pray that Bhagwan let the flower fall exactly at the time that I open my eyes, and the flower drops. And you know, yes, Bhagwan has blessed me with that decision. But then your mind is a monkey mind. You think, oh, that could just be a coincidence. It could just be an accident. Let me try again. Bhagwan, I'm sorry, that could have been a coincidence. Can you try again? I'm going to pray again. Another flower should fall. And I pray again, and the flower falls again. Uh, then again, you know, my, uh, my wife would say, maybe that is not uh, uh, that I didn't pray at that time. Let me also pray. So we keep constantly testing the Lord to listen to our prayers. But he is a kind Lord. He is a, he is a dear mother. He always does. But sometimes he will not, he will not uh, listen to that prayer. So you think, for oh, that prayer he has not listened. Why? Is he not a resident in my heart? Why is he not responding to me? Now, this uh, also Bhagwan has responded in a beautiful, in the 1960s, uh, you know, I think the Satya Sai speaks in between in the 1960s and 70s is a treasure trove that we should all read, not once, multiple times. And I think every time you read uh, Satya Sai speaks, because in those days you don't have the benefit of Bhagwan's recording his voice, you know, the, uh, his discourses being available to you, but you have uh, Satya Sai speaks. And I, it's my personal recommendation to all who are listening, read again and again and again. And uh, that will answer every question that you have. That is how Bhagwan responds. But in one of those Satya Sai speaks Bhagwan, or in fact, he has described this in multiple discourses. But he said once that it's like Bhagwan's grace is like a magnet. Uh, you know, the magnet on its own does nothing. It it, has, it 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 doesn't have any desire to pull iron uh, uh, towards itself. You put an iron nail, it it can't help but pull it uh, towards itself. So it's not the magnet that has any problem at all. It just attracts everything, uh, you know, irrespective of what is around it, as long as it's iron. But not all those iron iron nails go to the magnet. Why why does it not happen? So Bhagwan said the reason for that is there is a rust. When there is a rust on top of this nail, the nail doesn't come close to this magnet. Why? Is it the, pro is it the fault of the magnet? Bhagwan said, no, it is not the fault of the magnet. Is it the fault of uh, the nail? It is not the fault of the nail itself, but there is a, there is a rust that has come because of, uh, you know, there's not much use because of the circumstances, because of the environment. There is a rust that has formed on the nail. So unless and until we make that effort to take that rust out of the nail, that attraction will not come. Many times, the Lord within is constantly giving us message. He's pulling uh, us in the right direction. He's advising us to go in the right path. That advice is constantly there. But we as the jiva, uh, the soul, are you know, the mind, con uh, uh, the component, including the mind, we tend to forget uh, that there is, there is an externality that has come around us because of the influences of the external world. We do not listen to that, that advice from our friend. We don't listen to that, that advice from a companion. And that is where we see 
sometimes, I'm not saying always, but sometimes we feel that we are not, the Lord is not listening to, to us. But let us uh, 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 ask ourselves this brief question. When we have problems in our life, we ask Bhagwan. You know, we say, you know, Bhagwan, you are not with us because if you are with us, these problems wouldn't wouldn't come to us, right? We need him to support us with all our problems. We want to support him with with marriage. If you're not married, we want him to support us marriage. If you're married, we want him to support us with children. We want a good job. We want to have good salary. We want to get a promotion. We want to get an increment. We want to help him with our health. We want to, you know, uh, all our success. So and so that even when we go uh, on a holiday, we pray to the Bhagwan to take care of the house. So we also make Bhagwan, uh, uh, you know, a security guard of our house. We say, Bhagwan, you know, I'm going out, so please ensure that everything is safe and I come back. We get Bhagwan to do all of this work. But we have to ask ourselves one fundamental question, and I think this is a thought we, we should constantly have, is that are we, do we use the world, do we use everything around us, our experiences, ourselves, to, to achieve God? Or are we using God to achieve everything in the world? I want to repeat this question again. Are we using the world to realize God or are we using God to achieve our material success and pursuits? So this is a question that we should ask. If it is the first, that is, we're using every possible opportunity that we have to achieve um, uh, the world, Bhagwan will, you know, uh, uh, to achieve, uh, we, we, I'm saying that if I'm, I'm, I want to use the world to achieve God, that is the spiritual path. I'm doing service, I'm doing bhajan, I'm working, uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm doing every act that I'm doing, I'm doing it to achieve the Lord, to realize God, to bring him closer to me, to make him real in my eye, then we are in the spiritual path. If we are using God to achieve our material success, then it is not the spiritual path that Bhagwan wants us to set for ourselves. Yes, we, we can use God for material. I'm not saying we cannot, but it must not be the, the, the only thing that we do. You know, I, I, I had uh, someone that I knew, uh, uh, you know, for everything, if, if she wanted, every small, small thing that she wanted in her in her life, uh, she would go and, you know, uh, take this karpur, you know, the camphor. She will say, oh, Lord, give me this. I will light a camphor for you. God, give me this. She will not go anything beyond a camphor. She will say the best she will offer the Lord is a camphor. But this is happening. It happens all the while. I, I, I. Uh, in, 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 in Hyderabad, in the, from the uh, city that I come from in India, there is a temple uh, for Lord Balaji. And this temple is very famous uh, for, uh, for giving access to visa, the US. You know, there are a lot of engineers in India. They all want to get the, uh, uh, you know, the H-1B visa, green card, everything to go to the US. So they were, that, that temple, the Balaji temple is very famous for, uh, it's called the Visa Balaji temple. So the Lord is seen to be the one who confers on you the H-1B. He, more than the U.S. government, it is Lord Balaji of that temple who will give you the visa. But how do, how do people say, they say, how do they pray to the Lord? They say, oh Lord, I'm applying for my the U.S. Uh, visa now. I'm going to go around you 54 times now. I'll go on a production. You know, you circumambulate the Lord the sanctum sanctorum, you go around the, uh, the deity uh, in like as an offering. They say, I'll do 54 times. But if I get the visa, I'll come and finish the balance 54. Because they have prayed that I'm going to do 108 pradakshinas. I'm going to do 108 circumambulations around you. But 54, I'm doing it in advance. But once you, my desire is fulfilled, I will complete the balance 54. Now, how are we using the Lord? He's a friend, but we are making that, that a very transactional process with our friend. He's not a friend who is a well-wisher. We are not treating as a friend who is going to guide us in the right path, but we are treating him as a merchant. We are treating him as 
you know, a grocer, you know, someone that I can give something and get something. When you have a transactional equation with the Lord, that is when the rust forms on the, on the nail that Bhagwan talks about. When I take away that, I don't make it conditional. My devotion to the Lord is not conditional. It must be unconditional. And that is when I start using the world to achieve the Lord. The, everything that happens in the world is merely uh, a stepping stone of sorts to take me closer to the Lord. But how, how do we use? Now the question is, yes, okay, fine, brother. Uh, you're saying that we should achieve, but what has? Again, we don't have to go very far. Satya Sai speaks. You have to just you know, go through all the discourses of Bhagwan. Bhagwan is constantly giving us tips after tips. I don't think any, no avatar uh, has ever given as much uh, to us, uh, as many management tips, as many spiritual tips, you name it, as Bhagwan has. He has been prolific. I mean, if you if you if you look at it that way, no avatar has done what Bhagwan has done. We just need to go to the to the source and collect that information. Open up any any anything, and Bhagwan is constantly talking to you. First thing, and this is how I have sort of taken that essence of so many things that Bhagwan has said. Uh, you may not see what I'm saying verbatim from Bhagwan, but this is what you you would understand when you hear Bhagwan. This is what Bhagwan is called constantly telling us. But I'm saying this is how we need to have. How do you remove that rust from the nail? First thing is have no bitterness in your heart because that is the resident of the Lord. When the Lord is resident in that location, we must have zero bitterness, no bitterness at all. Every experience that we have is his prasad. It is his grace. It is, his, is what he's given us to experience based on what he thinks is right for us. He's our best friend. He knows what is good for us. He has given us that experience to face. We had to face that experience the way we are supposed to, not being you know, uh, 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 completely hands-off. You have to get involved, face that situation, and manage it. I but have no bitterness. There's absolutely nothing to be bitter about. An experience has happened, has come, face that experience and go on with it, with that love for the Lord. How do you do that? Is by looking at the Lord's experience, Lord's presence rather in every experience. Uh, okay, the Lord has given me this. The Lord has given it. You don't need to articulate it. You don't need to verbalize it. You don't need to talk about it. But in your heart, you must make that a reality. You must feel, oh Lord, Thank you. This is what you've given me. I'm going to face this. But I know you would, you would take care of it. You know, I, I love giving this example of Kulashekar Arwar. He's one of the saints, the Vaishnavite saints of uh, South India. He was a king uh, and he, he has, uh, but he was a great, great devotee of the Lord. Uh, he's the one who said, though he was a king of, of uh, the state, of, of the kingdom, he used to pray to the Lord saying that, oh Lord, I want to be the servant of the servant of the servant of yours. So he said, I don't even want to be your servant. As some of us say, Sir Bhagwan, let us be your servant. Kulashekar Arva said that I want to be the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord. I want to be that low. I don't want even want to be. Let me serve, you know, uh, three layers below uh, from the person. That is how the king of that kingdom used to pray to the Lord. But he himself said in one of his compositions, he said, Oh Lord, I am willing to face anything that happens in my life. I have no problem because that is my karma. I do, I'm not going to fight, uh, fight that. It is what has to happen. Let it happen. I'll face it. But oh Lord, but if I'm your devotee, I've taken Sharanagati, I've surrendered to you, I'm holding your feet, I'm holding your lotus feet. Oh Lord, if still if there is a negative consequence of my karma, just imagine what the other people is going to talk about you. They are going to tell you that you are not, you are quite weak because that you couldn't protect your devotee. So I've taken, I've surrendered to you. You have to take care of me and the Lord will take care. So you have to know how that true surrender, he will take care of you. But that experience has, we have to go through that experience. We have to face that experience without any bitterness in our heart. Uh, there is a story that I, I uh, love relating to my SSC children. It's about a, 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 a sage, a, a saint in Maharashtra in India, the Varkari saints of Pandarpur. Uh, he 
this is, his name is Namadeva. He used to see Lord in every experience. He was very poor. He, 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 they, the family used to really struggle to get one meal a day. That they used to be that uh, poor and they used to struggle. But he was constantly singing the praise of the Lord. Once he had just sat on for having his lunch after many days of hunger, uh, he, he finally someone gave him one piece of bread. And then uh, uh, he kept it with someone who had also donated that butter uh, to you know apply on the bread and eat. So he just sat down to eat. He closed his eye to pray. And when he opened it, he found that a dog had come into the house uh, had collected that piece of bread in its mouth and was running away. And Namadev started running behind that dog. So remember, he has not eaten for three days. Uh, he's really hungry, but the dog has taken, he's running behind. And people said, no, no, Namadev, forget it. Let that dog go. I will give you another piece of bread. Namadev said, no, 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 I'm not running behind to get that piece of bread. The Lord has taken that bread, but he forgot to take the butter. I kept the butter. They say he's not taking the butter. I'm running behind the dog to give, give that butter to that dog. That is the kind of the mindset that we must have. Every experience we have, look at the positive aspect of that experience. Look at it as the Bhagwan is present in that experience. Bhagwan is working uh, on something on, on, on us. So that is something that we should keep in our mind. The second thing that we should, Bhagwan has said in so many discourses, have equanimity. It's linked to the sum. One is the bitterness itself, but not having bitterness is, is one, is the way you respond. But that is in terms of action, how you respond to the world outside. Having that equanimity is the, is the subtler portion of it. No bitterness is external. Having that equanimity is, is internal. Like Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna says, uh, Sukha Dukhe Same Kritwala Bhala Bhojaya Jayo, you must have, whether it is success, failure, victory, defeat, loss, gain, you must have a, a very, very uh, equanimous mindset. Uh, so, you know, as I, as I mentioned, success, failure is all linked to karma. So you don't have to have, but we must have a wits about us. So even though there's something happening, that is very important. How you respond, like the story of Suradas, you know, the blind poet in India, he was walking in the forest and he fell inside a well. He is blind and uh, he couldn't find his way out. And he only knew one person that he can call out to his best friend, Lord Krishna. He called out to Krishna and uh, Krishna came. He rescued him from the well. He came out and, uh, and he fell at the feet, but he found that it was not Krishna's feet. It was some, someone else's feet. And he, he, he felt the anklets around the feet. And he said, this is a feat of someone else. It's, it's, a, it's a lady. And Krishna, he says, Krishna, who is this? Krishna says, this is Radha who has come with me. And uh, uh, Surda says, oh Lord, I'm such an unfortunate person. I, haven't, I don't have the eyesight to see you and uh, Mother Radha. So Krishna says, yes, I'll give you eyesight to see. He looks at uh, the, he gets the eyesight. He, he relishes the sight of Lord Krishna and uh, uh, Radha. He's, his heart is full of joy. And Krishna says, yes, you know, uh, you can keep this eyesight. I've given you this eyesight. And, but Surda says, no, Lord, I don't want to have anything. He said, why? He said, after I have seen you and Mother Radha, I don't want to see anything else in the world. Because after that, anything else that I see is a problem. So please let me remain blind. I don't want to see the world because I've seen the Lord. You must have the ability to think differently when you have that equanimous mind. It is not, equanimity doesn't come with dejection. It doesn't come with depression. It doesn't come with saying that, oh, I've lost everything, so there's nothing to gain. That is not equanimity. Equanimity is that positive. You have to be absolutely positive. Spirituality is always positive. It's always fun. And that is how you must respond to the world outside. And the third thing, uh, again, I, I see, and from own Bhagwan's own experience, Bhagwan could be that the childlike innocence of Bhagwan, everything that he does, he used to have his laughter, you know, the way he used to laugh at, at jokes, the way he used to uh, tease, that, that, that innocence. Life is not, uh, uh, you know, he used to say, don't have castor oil face. You must have everything in your life to be joyful. 
have Bhagavan says, be happy, be happy, be happy. That is a that is a clue that is giving us. That is the advice he is giving us. Always be happy, and that is the third thing. If you have all these, the three things that we do, that equanimity, having no bitterness, and the subtle. We're going from the subtler the three subtle points. Bitterness is don't respond to the world with with uh, with any negativity at all. Have equanimity in your mind. And even further behind is that joy, how the bliss which is inside you has to constantly shine like it has done from Bhagwan. So th this are this are the the, the point that you need to uh, have in in your in your in your mind that childlike innocence, that happiness that you that you have in your heart. Remember that one thing is Bhagwan will never forget any prayer. So uh, you know we should not have this thought that you know Bhagwan will will respond only if I do all of this. No, Bhagwan will respond. He will, he is very, he's the mother. He will always respond to your cries. He will do that. But, and however silly it is, okay, the, the, you don't need to worry about the prayers that are, you know, it has to be very, very high spiritual goals. Very, very silly thing also Bhagwan will bless us with. He's a friend and he will always do everything that is in our best interest. We have to also keep that in mind. He's a friend. He will do what is right for us. He will do what is what is what we uh, you know what is good for us and not something that we we think is good for us. You know this is the question always that has come. The Shreya and Priya that it comes in the Kathopanishad when uh, uh, Nachiketa, the young boy, is talking to Yama. The the concept comes. What is what is good and what is pleasant? We need what is good, not what is pleasant. Bhagwan will always give us what is good. But if you keep asking for what is pleasant, he will give what is pleasant if it is also good. But he will not give you uh, what is pleasant, but what is not good. You may still try to, you know, you can pray, but it is that rust that I talk about. A true friend will scold us. A true friend sometimes will give us a hammer blow to take us on the right path. Bhagwan is a constant companion who always leads us in the right path. We all, one thing we have to keep in our mind every minute of our life is he walks with us. When Bhagwan says, I'm in you, around you, above you, below you, he keeps saying this, you know, so many times we hear this. It is the absolute truth. It is the absolute truth. I'll, I'll finish with a small episode. Uh, I have gone a bit over my, my time slot, but I'll finish with this small episode, how Bhagwan even listens to your silly prayers. Uh, it, it so happened, uh, this was in a, in, uh, in a center that I used to go to, and there were always, there were some miracles that happened in the center. And uh, my, my wife, uh, she just told me once after one, one such miracle happened, and we were coming back after bhajans, uh, she said, you know, you are Swami's uh, student. Swami has given different people, you know, you know, a chain of ring or something. He hasn't given you anything. Why? Okay, then I said, yes, that is a good point. You know, Bhagwan hasn't given me anything. No materialization has happened for me. So normally I have this habit. Uh, it was evening, bhajan's finished. I went just before I, I go to bed, I go to Bhagwan's altar. I prostrate, pray. And I, I just pray for a good night's sleep. And then I go, that's my usual prayer. But on that day, I told Swami, you know, you have not given any, nothing has materialized for me. You know, you never gave me any, no materialized, nothing for me. So, and it was such a silly thought in my head. But after I asked him, I immediately said, no, sorry, sorry, forgive me, Swami. It was such a very silly, silly thought of mine. Uh, I know you've given me enough in my life. So forgive me. And I went to bed. Next day morning, normally what happens is in the morning, uh, the altar work is my wife's responsibility. So she, I went to uh, work in the morning and uh, she called me, uh, you know, when I was in the office, she called me and she said, uh, you know, Sridhar, there is this small Ganesha that is in our altar. I haven't seen this before. Uh, where has this come from? This small, this, this big uh, Ganesha which has appeared. Uh, I, uh, I said, uh, then I, I immediately struck me that, oh, I prayed for Bhag to Bhagwan yesterday. And uh, I immediately came back from office to have a look. Then I, then I told her, I said, this is how, you know, Bhagwan uh, listens to your prayers. Even if it is silly, you know, sometimes it is, these are simple, simple ways, Bhagwan, these are called visiting cards as Swami calls it. These are simple, simple things. He will still listen to your prayer. 
he will always because he is in he is always with you not not that altar not that photo in your altar but he is in your heart always every every millisecond he is with you and constantly working with you all we need to be uh, is good instruments able instruments in his hands and he will like krishna play the flute uh, we can uh, be the perfect instruments in his hand to make this world a better place with that i uh, uh, i will finish thank you very much for this opportunity to you know share these uh, experiences with you all uh, we probably have a 15 20 minutes for some q and a so i'll wait for that sairam sairam brother when you are listening about swami i don't think we should have any time limitations we could just go on and on <laughs> yes that was really wonderful i mean um you touched on everything when you talked about the letter thing it just reminded me because i when i started going to swami i kind of noticed everybody carrying letter and that was the exact that thought i had as well everybody says that he is a lord he knows everything why should i keep the letter but then having talked to few people and then i think i spoke to somebody in the in kulwant hall and they said um, that's the only way you kind of can get get close to swami so i said oh that's a good point right. he knows everything so i don't need to put it in a letter but i suppose that's a contact that will right. we can develop yeah. with him. so that was yeah. fantastic and i think you talked to touched about prayers as well we often i think i've watched a few episodes of you satsangs where uh, people have mentioned that our prayers may not have been answered at that time but it can be answered you know 10 years later 20 years later yeah. we don't yeah. know but um it it may not be in the package that we wanted it but it will be something that is suitable for us at that time so i think once again um prayer is a very very powerful tool that we all can hold on to and thank you for um, you know sharing your experience on that um definitely satyasai speaks for the devotees here i'm sure a lot of them are already hooked on to it if not i think we should really get addicted to satyasai speaks as you said um every word is so powerful and satyasai speaks really is yeah. the tool that we can go to so thank you for highlighting that such a size speaks um for us i think what really um touched me is that you know we live in a world where we are surrounded with people with all expressions bitterness especially it can happen within the family outside so if you really focus on not having that bitterness can and the situations and everything just forget and move on because at the end of the day as you touched on swami says that be happy i think he is asking us to be happy um when we went as a choir to the new zealand as a choir in 2008 and i think swami looked at all of us and he, he kept telling us be happy be happy so i think he stresses on that be happy point so yes. thank you for uh, once again you know reiterating all the things that we tend to forget because we get caught up in this world when you touched on this um the um, silly prayer i was thinking not when we all could drive and be out in the open i think it was somewhere i was had gone to a mall or something and i needed a car park desperately and at that time asking swami can you please give me a car park <laughs> so i suppose when it comes to swami no prayer is a silly prayer so and you were very fortunate what you didn't get materialized then he materialized it for you at home that was really wow as i said um sharing can really go on. i do have some questions here that um people have asked i think let's take some of those questions um how can spirituality be fun and positive always Oh, that's a that's a very interesting because that's what i keep uh, uh, telling uh, my ssc children because when when you when you, how do you make a group 3 or a group 4 uh, uh, child uh, look at spirituality as fun so we used to have these uh, thing is don't take anything seriously in in life that is what uh, you know uh, is a way to make spiritual life fun let me put it that way whether it is a bhajan that we are singing 
uh, you have to have that the bhajan must be sung not with fear in our heart but absolute joy it's okay even if you make mistakes and how many times when someone sings a bhajan incorrectly when you are going back from the center we keep talking about that bhajan oh that you know that that scale was wrong that the harmonium went for a what has happened is we are we are dissecting that uh, an act of spiritual service but if you change the whole thing it was so much of fun you know how they uh, they sang that bhajan that is the way to look at fun take the other example you know when when you when you have that that carpet that you lay in front of bhagwan to split the men and women if someone a child walks on that carpet you know how how panicky we become how stressed we become we have someone go and pull the child off the carpet why because we are we look at spirituality in in a very very rigid format oh a child cannot walk but we are not seeing swami in that child or oh, look at swami in the form of the child is walking on the carpet we don't want to see that when i when i you know sometimes i sing a bhajan and i forget a line uh, and uh, you know for me i look at it swami that is how you wanted that bhajan to be sung i i always say i i don't care about i don't ever talk about that bhajan being uh, oh i rendered a bhajan it was not good i that's it once a bhajan is rendered i i i have sung in front of god i know that that it, i miss something for example i gave a scale a wrong scale uh, and it was too high for me and i was squeaking at the top of my uh, and my you know my family would probably be getting embarrassed saying that you know uh, this has come out so horrible the bhajan but i say this is how swami wanted to listen to, to this bhajan today you, you have to make every action in your life uh, a fun you look at the fun aspect of that and that is how you make spirituality uh, uh, entertaining for yourself whether it is an act of uh, bhajan whether it is an act of writing om shri sai ram you know when i sometimes write om shri sai ram uh, you know 1 2 3 4 writing is x number of times i will write down in, in the form of bhagwan you know i write in two uh, om shri sai ram here another om shri sai ram there some just mix and match that is how you you have to constantly look at everything that you are doing as fun and that is how bhagwan will also express in your heart in that same form otherwise you know I, there is a story that i i heard somewhere of bhagwan um, that uh, uh, some lady who came into saikulan hall and one of the seva dal spoke very rudely to her and uh, and she was very upset she said if i if i get an op- if i get an interview with bhagwan i'm going to complain about this uh, lady uh, to bhagwan and it so happened that the same day she bhagwan called her in for an interview with a group and as soon as she went in the first thing she said is bhagwan you know this lady i want to first complain about this lady in front of uh, to you she was so rude how can someone who is that rude being there i'm scared of her you know this is she all the devotees are scared of her and then bhagwan immediately said can i tell you a secret even i am scared of her how that immediately you know that the entire atmosphere because you you are talking to the lord of the universe every interaction that you have with the lord of the universe has to be light he knows everything there's nothing to be you know so very serious about so spirituality is actually a very very um, it it's it should be fun it should not be uh, like a casual phase it has to be an effort we have to look it is a mental conditioning to look at everything as uh, uh, including things that happens in our centers in our organizations you have to look at it as fun you have to say yeah, this is how bhagwan is having fun this is how you know he is he is using us as an instrument to have fun at our expense so let him have fun at our expense so that is how it should be thank you brother that was really um beautiful yeah i think sometimes we kind of get confused with spirituality and some religious stuff so i think Correct. we need to separate them spirituality i mean swami emphasizing on being happy itself is an answer i think that we can make spirituality fun. that is what it is Yeah so, um thank you so much for that i think that then like leads to this next question that um they've been asked how do we always live in awareness of swami again i i mentioned this uh the living in awareness of swami is to know that everything that is happening to you is is his will so that is your first awareness of swami in your heart good bad uh, doesn't really matter you know it is his to know that he is there with you he is the one who is acting through you 
it has it is not a theory it should not be theoretical it must be a real experience for us uh, whether you know uh, something good happens uh, you know when when you have driving and someone comes in front of you you immediately get anger uh, coming up in your you know you, you are about tempted to honk some uh, your horn or maybe let go of a few choice the expletives why how but then the point here is that the minute that happens you must be conscious you must that's what bhagwan say constant integrated awareness you must be aware that that person who went in front of you is the lord swami went in front of me he just maybe you know i i was about to go to sleep you know he is reminding me of something oh thank god for letting me know uh, an accident that happens uh, you know the, the just the other day uh, uh, my, my mom uh, she she had a fire accident uh, no, no, nothing serious but i told her see thank the lord you know swami ensure that nothing more serious happens something you know it was just a small one instead of being a a major accident right so you have to you have to always internalize every experience as the will of bhagwan as seeing his hand in everything it could be a simple conversation between you and a colleague see see that as you're talking to your the colleague that he's talking to you is bhagwan it must be a real experience it's difficult it is difficult because we are conditioned right from our childhood to think differently we are conditioned right from a child to, uh, from from being a child to be competitive to look at them versus us uh, you know that is how we have been brought up right from our childhood so this is a lot of unconditioning of sorts which we have to we have to do to see the lord in everyone that is how that is that is the only way to see bhagwan uh, being with us at all times i know it's a bit, bit theoretical but that's that's the only way to do it otherwise there's no other way i know thank you brother i mean it is that constant integrated awareness swami has given us the tool it may sound mechanical to start with i think by practice obviously we need to practice because swami emphasizes on practice 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 right. and we may kind of start from home you know people you live with see yes, absolutely you can see swami in them and then take it out i like the idea even for budgets you're very right when we have this carpet anybody any child crawls on it we quickly take it away but then if we see the swami in the child then you know you would let it play the way it is so it is obviously for us to constantly um, remind ourselves that we are god and so is other so see the god in everybody so thank you so much for that I've got another question here, which says, um, "What life lessons have you learned from being in Swami's organization, being with Swami?" Yeah, uh, see, there is one life lesson that uh, I would say there's just one, and I think this was in an interview that I got with with Bhagwan, uh, and I had, uh, and when I I was going into the interview, I was thinking of asking. because i had some vedic uh, lessons and classes and i was i was learning vedam even before i went to puttapatti so i had this there was a shloka that was in my mind saying uh, so aham uttamotama the best form of worship is to say that i am god so that is so aham that is i am that i being uh, you know the atma and parmatma being the same so very uh, some sort of a spiritual twist i thought i should go to bhagwan and ask him this question who else but bhagwan can give you answer to such a you know sophisticated question so i thought i'm going to ask him this question so i had this opportunity i asked bhagwan i said bhagwan can you tell me as it is said the soham uttamotama how can i realize that that truth of soham i thought bhagwan will give me some mantra some major discourse at that time or he'll touch me and i will become you know enlightened and all of that but bhagwan simply said uh, swami said you know in telugu of course he said that is not very important just learn to serve others unconditionally that is all and uh, and then bhagwan was talking to the others but when bhagwan mentioned this to me from the time he gave this message to me for such a you know um, complicated question i thought service what has so i'm got to do with service unconditionally i didn't really understand and it has been uh, something that has i have constantly worked on it has it is the the mantra diksha that i got from bhagwan that service 
serve unconditionally so i never say no to any bhagwan's activity so not just me even my wife my children we have kept that in our mind any activity that is given to us uh we say yes there is no condition i have no time i can do this if that there is absolutely nothing that has been a constant uh uh i i would say the effort that we put in uh, from that bhagwan's one message to us to me and that has been following but i have learned so many lessons from that one three serve everyone unconditionally i have learned so many things every every few uh you know uh, two three years i have a new realization from that message and i have, I have uh, that has been my uh, uh, you know i would have to thank bhagwan for having given that opportunity to us and that to me is the only life lesson that i have learned that we are here only to serve unconditionally thank you thank you so much brother it is uh, very profound indeed and i think um when we when we serve i i remember reading or hearing about it when we serve it we should always think that we are not serving a person or somebody outside we are actually serving our own self that is what is one of the lessons i got from bhagwan eventually that when i serve someone unconditionally i'm serving myself that is so aham that is that is he and i are no different and and the lord is present there are so many lessons i've got but beautifully put uh, sister and that is exactly what was my first revelation from that message from bhagwan we don't serve others uh, thinking we are serving uh, another person we are serving ourselves every act of service is just for yourself absolutely and i think that then comes to the so hum so you know yeah. we are we are yeah. so and and that is beautiful i think i'd like to just there's quite a few questions but probably one of the ones that i should end with is any funny moments that you can share with swami in your uh, time oh there is there is one uh, uh, there are couple but i will mention this i i don't come from uh, uh, when i went to puttaparthi my family was not devotees of bhagwan so we're not uh, a sai family with in quotes so you know i did not even know where puttaparthi was i i just heard from my uncle who said that you know they are uh, he had a few students of mba from puttaparthi who was working with him he said these are very very good boys uh, so i think uh, you know you're writing uh, entrance exams for mba you can go and join puttaparthi so that is how i went to puttaparthi for the first time and uh, i saw bhagwan for the first time in brindavan for the summer course in 1996 uh, so we went there for uh, for the that was my first darshan of bhagwan i never seen satya sai baba before i did not even know uh, you know as i said with parthi was we did not even know people uh, even eventually i did find out that some of my relatives were devotees but i didn't know at that time so when i sat it was in the uh, in brindavan we were sitting the, among the boys i was in the second row of the boys and bhagwan was coming from a distance and i am seeing the the figure in orange robe walking from that distance and he was materializing something he was waving his hand some vibhuti was coming and as he was coming closer you know swami would walk slowly and i was trying to think i said you know how is this man generating vibhuti i am sure he has some contraption under his armpits uh, and he has some tubes coming here and he does something and then vibhuti will come out and i was just you know uh, thinking of how bhagwan is materializing this vibhuti and bhagwan came next to the where we were sitting i was in the second row swami came right now i was i was here and there was this boy uh, in front of me diagonally opposite to me and swami was standing in front of him and this boy got up and he said something to swami and swami patted him on his back then what he did he actually pulled his robe till here he pulled his robe he materialized vibhuti gave it to him he just looked at me he just looked at me and then he he walked away it was no it was not like uh, i i didn't feel that swami was saying see you had this doubt and i cleared that doubt no i didn't have anything like that but that time it was not a funny incident because my literally my my heart went uh, bounced up and down a few times from my throat and down to my abdomen i was i was very scared i said you know i had uh, this thought and uh, you know uh, th- that time you know i was not uh, i was not like a devotee i was just i just come seeing bhagwan for the first time and this happened but uh after a, a few uh, 
you know few months every time i think about this episode of me, uh, of this interaction my first interaction at bhagwan has always been very funny you know how bhagwan even there uh, he has this most beautiful way uh, to i i one more uh, maybe an episode i'll finish this again how bhagwan has this this most beautiful way uh, to to direct us from uh, the material view to the spiritual view i remember some boy uh, when we were in patti uh, he got up and told swami swami i am losing a lot of hair uh, he pointed to his hair say swami i am losing a lot of hair so swami then pointed he said even i am losing a lot of hair <laughs> so swami then pointed he said you know how you may say that this is uh, it's a trivial uh, incident but it is this mother's way to slowly gu- guide us saying is this very important in our spiritual sadhana there's something more important and you have to focus on that this is how bhagwan uh, uh, does there's a, there's a couple of add a few few interesting such interactions not directly but i have noticed bhagwan uh, interacting with students uh, and it was so funny but thank you for uh, bringing that again that thought back in my mind thank you that was really that was really funny to be it reminded me of um, our first trip to prashanti as well as you would you would do in your first trip you only heard about things and when you you know you really want to internally challenge kind of bhagwan and he will come and really answer you and i think my husband has similar experience as well where bhagwan pulled it and did the vibhuti yeah. so it's kind of um, i think the men out there the devotees who are watching this can be rest assured if you are really going bold don't worry there's bigger <laughs> things to worry about spirituality doesn't end with bold <laughs> fantastic thank you so much brother as i said i think when we are talking about swami and his uh, you know the, the our journey with him we should never put a time limitation to it because it can just go on and on but um due to time constraint um we will have to i think i will finish with all the questions but thank you so much for taking your time to share your you know um, your experiences your journey your perspective and answering those questions i'm sure we can have this session some sometime again in the near future um, but once again on behalf of um, the new zealand devotees here thank you sai ram sai ram everyone sai ram um just before um we conclude um tonight's um session with the bhagwan sarathi i would like to remind all our devotees and the viewers here that next saturday we will have another sharing from another um devotee from prashanti nilayam uh, brother shri vedanarayan will be sharing his experiences with the uh, swami so please tune in and uh, details will be shared in due course of time Thank you all for being part of the satsang tonight. We will now conclude with Arati to Bhagwan. Om Shri Sai Ram.